Hey, welcome back. You're watching Unapologetically Black and Fast, a four-day celebration of black joy and speed running. We're live from now through the 19th. Use exclamation point UBAF in Twitch chat for more info. Your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ channel help support Games Done Quick Hotfix. If you enjoy watching the speed runs, consider subscribing to the channel. We are back with more of this wonderful, fantastic black excellence. And the next run coming up is Fire Emblem, The Sacred Stones, ran by none other than the one, the only, Nestani. Go ahead, talk to him. All right, what's up, everyone? Uh, as Bees just mentioned, my name is Nastani, and today we're going to be running Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones. Uh, so this is basically the third installment of the uh, GBA Fire Emblem games. So there are three Fire Emblem games. This is FE8, actually. The first five didn't release in the Western market, and so basically the GBA was kind of like the beginning of Fire Emblem being released in the Western mar market. Um, and this is the third of the GBA games, as I mentioned, uh, and this is also my favorite Fire Emblem game uh, by far. This is definitely my one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm very excited to uh, do this, and let's just uh, get into it. So three, two, one, go. All right, so if you don't know much about Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem is a tactical role-playing game. So basically, I do a turn, they do a turn. That's the vibe, we fight each other. Um, so what happens at the beginning of the game is that we are aligned with the Kingdom of Rennes. Uh, we are controlling Princess Erica and her retainee, uh, Seth, who is basically her, like, loyal knight. And, uh, essentially what is going on here is that Grado invaded Rennes, and Grado was, like, basically a long-time ally of Rennes itself. Uh, and so this invasion is kind of, like, out of left field, and we're like, what the heck, bro? I thought we were cool, and we just ain't cool. Uh, but... That's the general vibe. We're running to Freyly right now, and then we're going to go try to save our brother who is in enemy territory. And that's the, the whole story in the beginning section. Um, but let's talk about the game itself. So this game is really interesting because there's a lot of RNG in Fire Emblem games, uh, depending, you have a lot of things with like hit rates, how often you hit people, things like of that nature. But in this game, we're going to completely RNG manipulate every single microcosm of this run. Everything is predetermined, and that is the vibe. And how we're gonna do that is by this. So I just made the game basically redraw my cursor there, and by forcing the game to redraw my cursor, I'm burning a set of random numbers, and basically these random numbers are set uh, at the start of the game. They're the same every single time. So if we burn the same set of random numbers, we will get the same outcome every single time. And that is basically the, the, the general vibe. And so, the, and basically what these numbers influence are things like how often we hit enemies, how often we get hit by enemies, um, how often we like land a critical strike on enemies, things of that nature. Basically anything RNG dependent, uh, it can uh, touch and influence. And so with that, there's a couple interesting things to note when like the original people who routed this, because I didn't route it because I'm not smart enough to do that. Uh, but when the original uh, uh, players routed this, they had to think about a lot of different things because you could, you know, mess, you could be like, okay, let me just crit every single time, for example, right? And I'll just one shot every single enemy and it'll be really good. But the thing you're going to notice is that we're actually not going to crit. I mean, we're going to crit a lot, but we're not going to like uh, crit like all that much. Um, and that's because like, for example, if I wanted to set up a chain of crits, I might have to redraw the cursor like 20 or 30 times or something. But it would actually be faster if I just simply hit the enemies twice and killed them, right? Like we're still about speed, not necessarily about swag for, <laughs> for, for less of a better term, right? Like we, we're, we're, the goal is to go through as fast as possible. And so a lot of times you will just see simple two hits like I just did there with Seth. And speaking of Seth, this is kind of our uh, main youth, uh, character that we're going to be using in the early game here. Um, but a thing to note about uh, these numbers, too, is that we can also influence level ups, which we'll talk more uh, about, which basically uh, in, in the next level. But uh, we can influence basically which because there's a bunch of different stats. There's like health, strength, skill, speed, defense all these things, we can actually use the random numbers in order to influence which stacks we gain. Um, and so for now, we're just gonna basically finish up this uh, level here. Um, 
and then now we're actually gonna go take a a, a shopping trip here uh, because we have a lot of money and we need to spend it. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to buy a bunch of uh, javelins. So javelins uh, are very good for us because they have a range of one to two. So in Fire Emblem, normally uh, you have the most common range is one to two in Fire Emblem games where you have melee range and then you have people that can attack you from literal range. And so essentially the reason why we want these javelins, hold on. All right, the, the reason that we want these javelins is because uh, there's a lot of enemy units that will attack us uh, from the two range rather than the one range, and we want to kill them on the turn that they attack us. So like if we had a range of one, for example, we couldn't counterattack on the same turn that they are attacking us, which would burn a bunch of time, and we don't want that, right? So whenever they attack us, we just want to be able to kill them on the spot without burning a player turn to do that because we want to finish the objective as fast as possible. Here we're just going to talk to Colin just so he doesn't move around and burn a bunch of turns. Um, and then we're just going to burn some more numbers here. Just don't worry about that. We're going to basically rescue Chain Garcia here. And then we're going to get going. So I mentioned that we can influence uh, level ups. So there's eight stats in the game. We really only care about three. We care about strength, we care about skill, and we care about speed. Uh, the least important th of these is actually speed because we're all, we're using intrinsically fast units. And so since we're already using fast units, uh, you know, getting a bunch of speed isn't necessarily our, the highest, you know, on the pecking order per se. You know, we're, we're not really pressed about getting speed, but we are pressed about getting strength and skill because if we do not have enough strength, we literally will not be able to do damage to people, obviously. And then... We want a lot of skill because for every two points of skill that we get, we get one point of crit. So we want to funnel a lot of uh, things uh, into uh, skill because if we have a 0% chance to crit, uh, you all know that if you multiply zero by anything, it's zero. So it, it's literally impossible to crit if we don't have a percent chance to crit from the get-go, which is why we need that. So like we can have a 1% chance and that's all we need, you know, is just a 1%. And so here we're going to get into uh, chapter four, which introduces us to um, the kind of main overarching story of the game, uh, which you'll see in a second, uh, which is monsters. Um, yeah, so there's monsters in this game that we have to fight. Um, but I actually want to talk about, um, that's not what I want. I want to talk about uh, this character, Vanessa. Vanessa is allowed to fly, which means that she ignores all terrain. Um, also fun crit here. Bonk. Um, Vanessa can fly, which means she ignores all terrain. So you see all, basically all these, like, bushes around on this map. They impede grounded units. So, for example, Seth is a grounded unit. And he is our main kind of idea of moving around because he can move very far. But the thing is, is that if he moves over, like forest he loses some movement and then if he he literally can't go over mountains for example but vanessa is not impeded by anything um which is important for uh the unit we're basically going to flip into later on in the run because seth is only going to be our primary ball handler for now until we replace him with someone else but for now let's talk about uh, these monsters because uh why are they here <laughs> uh because normally uh you know we are we're playing a game about like you know military conflict and monsters aren't necessarily military this is because basically uh grotto who is the empire that invaded us basically like uh is basically like restoring the demon king who is the big bad guy and basically when the demon king gains power monsters spawn and when um and that's the general vibe um but the units themselves are pretty normal for example this zombie guy that i just crit the crap out of uh they have very low defenses very low offenses and but they have a lot of hp these uh guys with the swords are similar to human units they can use swords and lances there's also bow users that are bow bone walkers but they literally have a bow like on their like uh avatar right so you can definitely tell that they are bow users um, and then the eyeball in the bottom right is a magic user who can attack from range, which is precisely the reason why we needed the javelins in the first place. Um, 
And if you haven't noticed by now, the goal for this map is to kill every single enemy. Um, so there's different goals depending on the map. Uh, and for this one, it's kill all the enemies, which is why you actually saw me spread out all of my units in order to cover all the different corners of the map in order to kill everyone as fast as possible. I kind of sent Seth to like the main conglomerate of enemies and I kind of cleaned up the other enemies with everyone else. And that's going to be the general vibe to pretty much all kill all maps. Um, that's not what I meant to do, but that's fine. We don't necessarily need to save there. So you actually saw me saving and basically soft resetting the game. Um, so we're going to hope I don't mess up because normally I do uh, save here, but I didn't. So <laughs> we're going to do this. Um, surely I don't mess up, right, guys? Uh, it'll be fine. Anyway, so uh, we are going to trade with Vanessa here. And I'm going to do a thing known as basically like rescue chaining because you cannot rescue a character. So like I can't pick up a character and drop them with that same character in the same turn. So what you saw me do is I picked up Vanessa with Seth, brought her over here, and then I took Vanessa uh, with Franz, and then I dropped uh, Vanessa with her, right? So I could basically move Seth up here with Vanessa. And so now I can three turn this map rather than uh, four turning it, for example. Um, so I'm basically cutting out a turn by using the rescue chain mechanic. Um, and essentially, since this is a this is a kill boss map, so we only need to kill the boss, which is why we unequip Seth there. Um, because we simply just don't need to kill the other enemies, and so we would basically be burning a bunch of turns, um, killing a bunch of enemies that we don't need to, like fighting them back, leveling up, and we simply just don't want to do that. Um, and so right here, this is uh, Fire Emblem, uh, this is Chapter 5X, not Fire Emblem, it is Fire Emblem 5X! No, this is Chapter 5X, um, and so X chapters in Fire Emblem are uh, known as Gaiden chapters, which basically a Gaiden chapter, it literally translates to side story in English, it's a side chapter. Uh, these are normally optional and skippable, but this one is not in this game because this introduces us to our twin brother Ephraim. So we started out uh, controlling Erica, but Ephraim is the twin brother of Erica, and this is also the dude whose route we're going to take uh, because we're taking Ephraim route as... Boop, boop. All right. As, as the route... Uh, you could see the name of the game is Eframe Route. We're going to be taking this guy's route, but we have to finish out this early storyline. So I'm unequipping Orson here because this is a Seas map, so we have to get to uh, the, the throne room and basically uh, seize the map and basically like seize the, the square. So we have to kill the boss, and then we have to take the square underneath it with Eframe, which is why you see me uh, kind of just uh, running Eframe down. But I think it would be better if all these enemies got out of my way so that I could get to uh, the throne room as fast as possible. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't, wouldn't we agree that it would just be nice if all the enemies just uh, unequipped themselves? That's not good. Oh, I messed up. All right, oh, no. so we're going to have to do this again. Um, yeah, so that, that was, that, 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 that's the problem there. So... <laughs> Unlucky, we get to do all of that again. That is what I was afraid of. Um, so this normally wouldn't be that bad if I did my save per correctly, but uh, now we have to do this map again, which is not great because we've already done this. Um, but we're just gonna try to uh, bulldoze through this. So right. we, I we guess got this a couple is... random people come in chat now, so now they get to see it. So you know, yeah, true. Right. Yeah, yeah, we you we know. just yeah we get to watch this again. So. This is the main issue with this game uh, for like if you're trying to speed run it and like knock down your time. If you literally make one mistake, it's over, <laughs> which is normally not that bad. There's just this one instance through 5X where it is a problem um, because uh, normally what I would do here is I would save after this chapter, chapter four. Um, and wait, let's just get through this real, real quick. Yeah, that um, so normally I would save after uh, this chapter just so I don't have to do this chapter because uh, you have to do 5 and 5x back to back. I don't think you necessarily have to 
truly do that, but for the RNG to line up for sure, you have to do it back to back, which is the reason why I'm doing it uh, five and five X back to back. But you can save after chapter four, which is what I meant to do. And chapter four, as you can tell, is a kill all map. So this is a very long map to redo, which is why it's a big danger zone, which is why I was trying to save uh, going into it, but I just accidentally misclicked the B button, which happens. Um, but yeah, so basically what you saw me do there is you actually also saw my cursor kind of flying in between the units, which I guess we can talk about. I was going to talk about this a little bit later, but we'll talk about it now because uh, we just are. Um, so basically if you press the L button, you basically can uh, go between your units uh, basically in the order. So like at the beginning of a chapter, you basically have like the prep screen that basically lists your characters in order. And you, if you press the L button, you basically cycle through the list, right? Which is what you saw me doing. And that's why I was able to just like snap lock to all my units because you can cycle through them uh, in that. And that is basically uh, part of the speed tech of, of this game is to cycle through units in that manner. And it's also into the speed tech of this game to not mess up. And so why is it a super big deal that I, I messed up and I had to uh, reset? Well, that's because if you make one mistake, you're actually going to... Uh, I didn't complete my thought, I just realized. But basically, uh, if you if you make a mistake, you're going to mess up your numbers, uh, like the, the random numbers, the ones that we are manipping. And basically, I don't know uh, backups uh, because they just don't exist. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so what you're going to... What you typically do... Boop, boop. So typically what happens is that if you make a mistake um, and you don't commit to an action, um, you can actually soft reset the game and then you can do that action again and then it resets your RNG so it's fine. So like as long as, like for example, if I messed up this line here but I didn't actually drop Seth, like what I'm about to do right now, um, if I didn't actually drop him there, I could soft reset the game and do this turn again and I wouldn't have to like reset the whole chapter. But uh, basically, if you commit to an action and it's wrong, you have to restart the whole chapter, which normally is not a big deal in any other chapter besides 5X. <laughs> in any other one, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but this one, it does. <laughs> anyway, so now we're going to be so back into 5X now. Um, and another property is that the glitch that I was doing, enemy control glitch, um, you cannot... Um, if you soft reset the game, which I hard committed to an action there with the trade, I hard committed to an action, so it was botched anyway, but you can't like recover it uh, either because um, if you reset the game while you're controlling the enemies, uh, it just lets the enemies play again, which we don't want to do. And so that's why we had to go through this whole uh, mess again. But now we are so back and we're definitely not going to mess it up this time because I will cry if we do. I won't cry, but like, I will be very upset. <laughs> um, so let's talk about uh, ECG, also known as enemy control glitches, which is what I showed off before I unfortunately messed it up. Um, so, <clears throat> so basically what I'm doing here is I'm sending Orson to the top of the map. And basically if you get an uh, enemy to land on an actor tile and you soft reset the game after they end their turn on an actor tile, you basically uh, get to control the enemies, and that's the the long and short of how it works. Um, and specifically, how we're creating the actor tile is by opening this door. So I open that door, I create the actor tile in the top left corner. This guy attacks E frame, he ends his turn. I soft reset the game, and then now I'm able to control the enemies. Um, and now I'm gonna actually shut up here uh, because I don't want to mess this up. Not a problem, <clears throat> man. This is this is a lot. I mean, oh my god, I love it though. It's so interesting to look at, like all these. You know, I'm I'm used to playing like uh, when when it comes to big battles like this. I, my 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 thing is um, the Dynasty Warrior games, just because I just like everybody rushing at once, and I like doing big combos and slapping everybody all over the screen. But like this stuff, this is this is I love watching this because it's so impressive. And I just, I can't wrap my head around, <laughs> like, getting the strat for it. So it's really cool to watch someone who has that down, like, knock that out. Yeah. Um, 
So we are, are now so back. And so basically what you saw me do there is I basically went to every enemy in the game. I either unequipped their weapon or I traded them to basically a different unit or like a different class because there's different classes and basically like monks, for example, use light magic and not lances. I trade it so that they can't wield a weapon. And if they can't wield a weapon, they can't fight me. And now we are so out of the woods. Uh, now it's fine again. Uh, but a thing that I haven't mentioned about uh, ECG is that we can um, actually activate ECG at will with a torch staff. Um, now there's a couple limitations here. Uh, a, the biggest limitation is that you cannot use a torch staff if there's no fog on the map, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is <laughs> probably the biggest limitation of it. <laughs> um, but uh, so what we're going to do is the torch staff actually creates actor tiles. So I'm going to create an actor tile here and then I'm going to two turn this map. This is typically a very difficult map um, uh, casually. Um, but uh, instead, what we're going to do is that we're going to two turn this map smile because this guy's going to walk here. I'm going to reset the game and then I'm just going to take this guy, bring him out and then uh, I'm just going to end the enemy's turn um, and then we're just going to be done smile. Vanessa's just going to open up the fog so I can see them because you can't, uh, you can't basically, if you don't have vision on an enemy, you cannot kill the enemy. We're going to two hit this guy. And that's the map smile. Yay! I know this is probably very fun for people to, <laughs> for people who actually have played this game. Yeah, we just, yeah, it, it's fine. It, victims of war, like, we, we don't care, man. It, it's just so, so easy for us. And speaking right. of so easy for us, uh, this map is not so easy uh, for Seth. Uh, which is why we are not using Seth. This is one of the few maps where we're actually not going to be using Seth at all. Um, and this is because there's a bunch of water here. And as I mentioned, uh, Vanessa can fly and Seth can't swim. Um, so we're going to fly over the water here uh, because this is a seas map. So we need to get our Lord, Erica, to the uh, final tile. And this is actually going to be one of the few times in the run, uh, one of two, where Erica is going to kill an enemy. Um, and Erica is actually going to kill the boss. Uh, fun fact. Um, this is because Erica has a weapon known as uh, the Rapier, which basically does triple damage against uh, Cavaliers and Knights. So Cavalier is the type of the of the guy there. One, two, three, four. And so basically, uh, this weapon has a might of seven. Erica has four strength right now, but we triple the seven on the weapon. We don't triple Erica's strength, right? <clears throat> which means that we crit this guy and one shot him. Um, just a little fun crit there for Erica, just because this is her literal one time in the spotlight. So we, we get we get to watch her animation. Like, come on, who doesn't like to see Erica crit? I love seeing Erica crit. Uh, but now we're gonna turn off animations because we don't want to see all the other animations in the game. Because uh, again, slow. We don't want to be a part of that. Um, and then what we're gonna do is one, two, three, four, five, six. And basically, I burned a bunch of those numbers because uh, similar to Erica's rapier, those bow users, bows are super effective against flying units. So if they touch Vanessa, Vanessa will die. Um, and we need Vanessa to live, so we're just going to make them miss. Um, and also make them miss Erica. Um, because that's that's just what we do. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to uh, simply just end this one. And then... You also, just a thing to note is that you see me soft resetting the game in between chapters. This is because whenever you soft reset the game, you basically reset the RNG seed so that you get um, the RNG that you need every single time. Um, and that's why you see me soft resetting the game. Also, just soft resetting the game in general. The way I'm doing that is by pressing um, A, B, start and select, and then I'm holding start. So I press those four buttons and then keep holding um, start, and then that soft resets the game, and that will actually put you into... Um, back into battle on the Japanese version. On the US version, um, if you soft reset the game, you will go back into battle, but what happens is that you go all the way back out to the, like, the, the first loading splash screen, and you have to watch that, and it takes like five seconds, and on this copy of the game, it just doesn't. And so what we're gonna do here is that we're just gonna do something really cool here where this knight's gonna attack Seth, and we're gonna miss intentionally. Um, because if, because again, this is another seas map. Shocker. Fire Emblem loves their seas maps. Uh, they're kind of one trick ponies, I am not going to lie. Um, but we have to seize uh, again, which means, guess what? If we have to kill a boss or we have to seize uh, a throne, killing enemies is slow. So we intentionally don't uh, hit an enemy there. 
so that we don't have to uh, kill the other ones, right? Because Seth will just kill everyone right now because he's so OP. Um, speaking of Seth and OP, I haven't kind of mentioned it, but basically Seth is... Uh, the Fire Emblem likes to do this archetype where they give you an OP unit at the beginning of the game. It's normally a pre-promoted uh, unit. And Seth is a pre-promoted paladin, so he has a bunch of movement. He just has a very high stats. And normally they give you these uh, units in the early game just to kind of make the early game a bit easier if you wish to use them. But it's generally seen as to... It's generally better to not use them uh, because they typically have bad growth stats. But... um. As I mentioned, we control our own growth stats. So it doesn't really matter for us. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep using Seth. Um, another thing to note too is that also Seth in general in this game is kind of famously OP and so he already has good growth stats, but that's neither here nor there. It's, it's kind of just compounded onto uh, each other here. But this concludes chapter eight and this concludes our, inner, our dealings with Erica as our main Lord because now we're going to uh, go to uh, Ephraim side of the story. And I'm going to drink water because I'm dying. We also got 10,000 money. I wish I got 10,000 money. Um, all right. So now we are uh, aligned with uh, Ephraim here. So there are basically two different main routes uh, in this game. You can either go with Erica or you can go with Ephraim. We are choosing to go with Ephraim because this is the only route I know, mm -hmm. A and B. I really like the Ephraim route. Um, <laughs> that, that, is, that is the long and short of it. Oops. Get out of here, Nemi. We don't, we don't want you. Um, all right. So uh, now we are with Ephraim. So Ephraim is our primary lord, and he is going to be the one that's going to be seizing uh, the maps from now on. We're going to do a simple redraw here. We're going to rescue him, dump him here, and then we're going to lure this guy up to the top of the map because, as you can guess, we're going to do some ECG here. Um, spoiler alert. I know. I spoiled it. How dare I? Um, but we're going to do it again. Um, but let's just kind of talk about the, the routes for a, a moment. So um, basically what is happening in the storyline right now is that we rescue our brother who didn't really need rescuing, but like whatever. We go back to Frilia. Um, Grado, who's the nation that invaded Rennes, their, it has come to our attention that is their goal to uh, destroy all the sacred stones, which the sacred stones are basically the thing that keeps the demon king uh, dead and keeps monsters from not spawning. And so, since they're trying to destroy the sacred stones of Renitz, they destroyed the stone of uh, the sacred stone of Grado already, which is why we ran into monsters in chapter four, for example. And then uh, they killed the <coughs> stone of Frelia. Um, and then their goal is to kill both Jehenna's Sacred Stone and Rostin's Sacred Stone, which are the other two countries in this uh, land. Um, and basically with Erica's route, you go to Rostin and uh, ooh, we're just going to do this. So th that's what I was talking about. So if you mess up something uh, and you don't commit to the action, you can just uh, soft reset the game. And then you will reset the RNG so that it doesn't matter that you messed up. Now, I didn't like super, super messed up there. I probably didn't need to soft reset the game. But like, why, uh, why tempt fate here? I'm just going to soft reset the game and just ensure that I'm doing the correct thing. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then so basically Eric is going to Rostin and she's going to basically secure that sacred stone. And uh, Prince Ennis, who is the Prince of Frelia, is going to uh, Frelia, but he doesn't get his own route in the game. Uh, but that's that's neither here nor nor there. But those are kind of the the two different uh, routes. Oh, and then Ephraim, we are going directly to Grado's capital to kill the emperor. Um, we are trying to end the game right now. We're, we're basically we're basically trying to end the war uh, right now. And I'm going to end this map uh, pretty quickly because I'm now not going to let the enemy play anymore. Uh, because fun fact, if we move the enemies out of the way and we can run all the way to the end. Uh, to the square where the enemy is at, uh, it's pretty fast, guys. Um, I know, it's it, it's a shocker. And so that's what we're going to do. But you may be asking, well, you moved all these people out of the way, but you didn't unequip them like you did in Chapter 5X. Um, and you would be right, except for the fact that as long as the enemy keeps ending their turn on the actor tile, we can keep doing this. And we can just keep running it and running it and running it and running it. And uh, Gilliam's just going to keep living and just keep dodging because that's what, what we want him to do. And we're just going to keep ending the enemy's turn and they just don't get to play the game. And it's just so easy for us, you know. Um, a thing to note is that you actually can uh, mess this up if you do it too late. 
uh, which is why you see me doing it too early uh, a lot of times. Um, but this is going to be the last one. Unfortunately, Gilliam is going to die. Um, no amount of flowers uh, is going to help him uh, there. Uh, unfortunately, Nemi is going to be a little upset, but other than Nemi, I think it'll be fine. Um, we're going to go to chapter 10, which uh, in chapter 10, we are going to watch a cutscene, everyone. Woohoo! We're going to watch a cutscene because there's an earthquake happening. Oh my God. All right, actually, that's the only part of the cutscene we're going to watch. Um, so the <laughs> I'm intentionally watching uh, the cutscene there. Ooh, this is a little awkward. Okay, I'm going to have to do this. Okay, we're so back. Um, so the reason I watched that cutscene is because basically, uh, for some reason, if certain cutscenes actually matter that you view for RNG... Uh, wise, I don't really know why, but all I know is that if I don't watch that cutscene, uh, I get bad RNG. And if I do watch that cutscene, everything works. Um, so we're gonna watch the cutscene and everything's going to work. Now, a thing to note is that in Fire Emblem, uh, you can recruit enemy units sometimes, and these units are basically, basically, if they have a picture, you can recruit them. So, for example, this guy doesn't have a picture, but this guy has a picture, and this guy's Cormag, and we really want Cormag, uh, because that guy's really good. And this is Vanessa. She's going to crit this guy and kill him. And Cormag is going to do the same to the boss. So I mentioned that we are going to pivot uh, away from um, Seth here. Cormag is our pivot. Um, as you could tell, Cormag is a flying unit, so he basically ignores uh, all terrain, uh, which means that we can basically move at will, which is very, very important for us. And so Cormag is a uh, Weavern uh, Knight or Weaver and Rider, I guess, is his class right now. But he's a Weaver Knight, and basically, uh, for anyone who's ever played Fire Emblem, you know that Weaverns hit really, really hard, and they don't really take that much damage from anything uh, besides, like, bows. And I guess magic users as, as well, but, like, they're really, really good against physical units, and we're, for the most part, we're fighting physical units on the route. So Weaverns are just really, really uh, OP, because they're just, they're just so big. Um, and anyway, so this uh, this chapter is over because this is a either defend Dussel for like 13 turns or kill the boss. As you can imagine, we're just going to kill the boss in two turn it, and that's going to be that. Um, and then we're going to move on to uh, chapter 11, which this is one of the hardest chapters in the game. So I'm going to try to uh, not mess this up because this is one of the most input dense, similar to chapter 5x. It's just a very input dense thing, um, and it's pretty easy to mess up. And so I'm going to kind of not talk too too much uh but what we're going to end up doing oh my goodness okay so my prep is a little owned here right now because i accidentally didn't deselect nemi earlier on and so i'm actually gonna have to do a couple extra preps here uh unfortunately but that's all right because we actually want franz to be here and we want oh we're getting so owned um this is fine i think ladies and gentlemen we might be owned owned i'm not gonna lie here uh i think we're good yes we're fine this looks right enough um i didn't realize this was gonna have that many implications on my run um <laughs> otherwise i would have corrected that earlier on it's fine um I'm just going to have to really memorize things. All right. Anyway, we should be fine here. Uh, everything else looks like it's lined up correctly. But as I mentioned, uh, we're, this is a lot of input density here. And this is because uh, we're going to do a lot of ECG on this map. As you can tell, there is fog here. And there's a bunch of enemies. This is a kill all map. And basically, this first turn is kind of a dead turn. So none of the enemies move. Um, and so we're basically going to move them. Uh, ourselves so that we can basically have the enemies do a turn um so Mulder's gonna go up here he's gonna place another torch set so that we can get create another actor tile so that we can ecg uh this next turn uh tana's gonna go down here and she's gonna do some fun number crunching for us Ephraim's gonna do some number crunching for us and then we're gonna switch to this iron lance and we're gonna kill this guy and then we're gonna end the turn and if you can't guess what we're going to do here uh we just got cormag and since we want Cormag to be our main unit going forward, uh, we are feeding every single enemy on this ship into Cormag. 
<laughs> um, because we want to level him up specifically to level 15 so then we can uh, promote him so then he's super OP and we're basically going to spend this whole chapter just like funneling and funneling and funneling into uh, Cormag um, uh, yes alright and then I also kind of just wanted to cover uh, another question that some uh, s someone asked actually when I did this on Limey's uh, RPG show that I didn't get to but they, they asked basically like why do we speed run the game if everything is predetermined and uh, the fact of that is you literally already saw me make a mistake and lose a catastrophically amount of time right but moreover uh, there's a lot of uh, speed tech most notably the the biggest like speed tech in the game is holding down the B button because whenever you hold down the B button and move the cursor the cursor kind of flies all over the place okay we're gonna watch this again so again if you do it too early you can try again but if you too, do it too late you're kind of screwed um, and so basically if you hold down the B button you can make the cursor move faster which we will do uh, sometimes, not all the time, because especially on this map, I'm not going to do that too often, just because I want to ensure that I don't mess up anything. Um, but I think the the, the biggest the biggest thing as of to like why do we speedrun if everything is uh, basically pre predetermined is the fact that I am five minutes slower than the world record. <laughs> <laughs> like my PB is five minutes slower than the world record, so that should show you like the amount of gap of like speedrunning this game versus like the super super uh, top level, right? There's a lot of layers because there there is a lot of things to both think about and just execution wise as well. Um, so we're gonna get through here. I am. Admittedly, a little concerned here because I've never had to adjust prep before. Um, and I'm pretty sure prep doesn't uh, affect RNG. Uh, pretty sure <laughs> is the keyword, which we will find out uh, right now, actually. Uh, in a couple enemy moves, we will find out if this affects RNG. If so, I'm going to switch to a backup save file, which I do have one, thankfully. Uh, but I don't, everything so far to my knowledge is lining up perfectly right now. So I think we're so fine. I'm just going to have to adjust <laughs> basically every single map. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it, guys. It's all good. Um, and so this is uh, my check that I love to do on this map where I'm like, did I do things correctly or not? If this guy gets crit, uh, we did it correctly. We're so back. We're just so back. We're so fine. Everything is fine. Um, we're going to get this guy. We're going to do a little redraw here. And then we're going to do our, our last turn here. And then that will be this uh, this map here. Right. There's a cutscene there. i got to skip that. Um, all right. So the reason that we switched to the Iron Lance, by the way, is because the Iron Lance has 45 uses. But our Killer Lance basically has 20 uses. And Killer Lances increase your chance to crit, which means that we typically want to use the Killer Lance on things like bosses rather than normal enemies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's one of the longest redraws that we do uh, in this game. Fun fact. Um, we're going to do a longer one, though, in Chapter 14. Um, but yeah. And so here, what we're going to do, we're going to take stuff over here. He's going to kill these uh, enemies over here. And this is going to be uh, the map. And we're just going to let the enemies run it down at us. Uh, fun fact, for some reason, these uh, bow users, even though they're in range of Cormag and they are super effective against Cormag, they choose to not fight Cormag, even though he can't fight back. And instead, they choose to fight Seth and die. I still have no idea why this specifically happens with them. <laughs> Because they can move, but they just choose, they choose not to. They just choose death, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. They just, they want it so bad, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird to me. But here's going to be the, the last enemy, and we're going to make our way into uh, Chapter 12. So, um, Chapter 12, uh, we just got uh, uh, Cormag to level... What's it called? 15. I can count, guys. Trust. Um, we got him to level 15. Um, and so... Oh, cool. That lines up nicely. Okay, I feel like only some of these will not line up. But surely everything else lines up. And so what we're going to do here is basically uh, in Fire Emblem, there are uh, basically like 
uh, class like promotion items and uh, Cormag spawns with one of these items on him which is very nice for us so that we can simply just change class right now and we can promote him into the promotional class Weaver Knight. We are specifically uh, choosing Weaver Knight for a very specific reason. We'll talk about that later, but the most important thing that's going to happen right now is that we're going to gain a, a tick of movement, so we're going to be able to move one more space, and then we're also going to get a giant stat buff here, and we're going to hit very, very hard now, uh, because whenever you uh, use uh, uh, one of these promotional items, you basically gain a bunch of stats because you're promoting to an advanced class. Um, and it's just very nice that he spawns with an Elysian Whip, so we just use the Elysian Whip that he spawns with. And here, we're going to get absolutely smacked by uh, all of these uh, mage guys. And hopefully this bow doesn't hit us. Okay, cool. That's that's good for us. Because um, if he hit he, uh, if he hit us, we would die. Uh, but now we're just going to run away from these guys. Um, <laughs> I'm so stressed. He's going to hit us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is a, another uh, kill the boss chapter. So we're kind of just going to run away from all these enemies. Unfortunately, all these enemies love to run it down. So we just we have to watch them move. Um, this is a lot of, like, uh, you're going to see this a lot in chapter 13. Uh, well, the next chapter, uh, watching enemies move. It's kind of the bane of existence because whenever enemies move, they just take up time, right? But it's fine. We're going to crit the Cyclops. And then we're going to get to uh, chapter uh, 13, which is one of my favorite maps in the game, actually, just casually to uh, play. And... Give me in there. Um, and so, as I kind of alluded to, chapter 13 is a very, very long chapter, uh, mainly because it is a kill-all chapter, and there are many, many things to kill. Um, <laughs> and so... Uh, yes. I'm doing things in my head here. All right, we're so back. Uh, where's Ross at? We're going to do some inventory uh, stuff here. We're just basically just getting javelins on uh, Cormag and Seth so that they can basically kill everyone uh, with them. Okay. So, kill all uh, chapters are pretty interesting in Fire Emblem, uh, mainly because we have to kill every enemy on the map, right? And a lot of the times these enemies, especially on this map, are very, very spread out. And so what we're gonna do here is that we're actually going to use each of our, we're basically gonna use only promoted units to kill people on this map. So Garrick, similar to uh, Cormag, this is Garrick, by the way, he's a mercenary that travels with uh, Prince Ennis, who basically Ennis sent him over here because we're storming the Grado capital, and so we need all the help, help that we can get, so he joins us on this adventure. Um, but he spawns with the Hero's Crest, which is a promotional item, and we're going to promote him immediately. And this is because if you promote him, he actually has enough stats and stuff in order to k clear out the right side of the map. Um, and then Dussel, who we got in Chapter 10, which I briefly mentioned, we were saving Dussel from uh, Grotto. Dussel is an Imperial General of Grotto who basically turned coats to uh, Rennes because he did not believe in what um, uh, the, the Emperor was doing because the Emperor's kind of going mad, right? But so the interesting thing about these maps is so we're basically how we're splitting this map up is we're splitting it into four sections we have dussel clearing out the far left side we're having garrett clear out the far right side and then we're sending seth and cormag down the middle to basically kill everyone else so uh seth is going to handle the boss of this map selena as well as just the middle left kind of section of the map and then Cormac's going to handle the middle right portion of the map so we kind of just have these four advanced class units to basically bulldoze everything here and the reason why we're using advanced class units here is because at this point in the game this is where you're actually going to start promoting your units if you're playing it casually and so we actually need the extra firepower from these promoted units in order to safely and securely kind of just like roll through these enemies in a, in a quick and efficient manner um And that is just kind of the, the vibe for this map. And so now I'm going to story bomb you guys because that is what we're going to do because this level is eight minutes long. It's, it's just the way it has to be. I'm sorry. Like, what do you, you want me to react to the crit? I mean, I could. Oh my God, he crit. Oh my God, Selena missed. 
you know, I could do that, or I could just talk to you about what's going on in the game. <laughs> but first, I'm going to uh, not mess this up, because this is one of the uh, maps where if you do mess up something, uh, it's just a kill-all map, so it takes a very long time to do it. So I'm going to make sure that we don't mess up here, because we don't need to eat any more time than we are already eating. Um, one, two, three, four, five... Switch javelins. So that's a Trubador. Uh, Trubadors are basically healers. Uh, they cannot fight. They can only heal. Um, and so we have to burn a player turn in order to uh, kill them, uh, which is why you saw me prioritize uh, that that healer there. Um, which healers are pretty annoying because we do have to burn a, a player turn, especially on kill all maps. Um, but basically uh, what is going on right now is that uh, we are traveling with a companion called Murr. Murr is the great dragon. Uh, she is also Ephraim's grandmother. Fun fact. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> and basically what happens on this map is that uh, uh, Selena is ordered by the prin uh, so Prince Leon who is uh, basically Emperor Vergard is the Emperor of Grado, the king. Uh, his son is Prince Leon. Prince Leon orders Selena to go get the Dragonstone, which there are only two Dragonstones. This Dragonstone is Murr's Dragonstone. Murr's Dragonstone, if she uses it, she could transform into a dragon. As is the, the, it's called a Dragonstone. Like, I know, they weren't... It's pretty on the nose, okay? It's pretty on the nose, okay? But, um, so she goes... Selena goes and picks up the, the Dragonstone. And, uh, basically Murr runs away because she detects her Dragonstone because she has, like, detect senses, and so she can de detect, like her dragon stone and dark energies because I don't know she's a dragon she's magical and has abilities for some I don't know why dragons would have magical abilities don't ask me <laughs> but uh ow that kind of hurt uh don't worry about it Cormac will be fine it's it's so we're so fine um good that missed okay um and so this is the end of this turn uh we're gonna do some more movements here I'm going to keep not messing up and we're going to keep this uh, train rolling here. Um, goodbye. Choo -choo. Um, so here, what we're going to do is we're actually not going to attack here. We're going to use this energy ring. So there are certain items in Fire Emblem that basically uh, give you plus two in any stat. We want Seth to use that energy ring very specifically for chapter 15 because we are going to kill a boss in chapter 15 and we need the plus two strength in order to kill the boss. And if we don't use the item, we will not have enough strength to one tap the boss and we will die. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to use the energy ring and gain plus two strength. So that's just what we did. And then he's just going to kill everyone else here. Um, so basically, Murr ran off. Selena finds her. Uh, basically, uh, Selena finds out from Murr that basically. Uh, the Demon King has properties where he can basically destroy your mind um, and your your soul because uh, that's just what he does uh, just for fun. And so she basically finds out that Emperor Vergard has lost his mind, but Selena is so devout to the Emperor that she will not betray him like Dussel betrayed him and, and Turncoat. She, she's so loyal that she just will not be doing that. Um, and so we're going to kill her because she will not turn traitor. Uh, she's just so devoted to him, and I wish she was devoted to me. Um, I love Selena. Anyway, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to kill everyone else on the map here. Uh, this is going to be the last player turn. <laughs> Look, Selena is one of my favorite uh, antagonists just in general in, in gaming. She, she's just one of my favorite characters. Um, but... That is uh, our final turn here. Uh, if you notice, there's someone on this map that is pretty low health. I don't know who that might be. Is it me? No, it's this guy with two HP, so hopefully he doesn't get hit again, right, guys? It would be so unfortunate if this guy got hit again. Um, so surely they'll just keep missing, right, guys? Surely we're just gonna get really lucky so. here, right? I think we need some more. Yeah, look, we already got uh, we got another sub in chat, so that seems like it's it's. Look at that! It just keeps protecting you. It's just it's just so easy for us, you know. <laughs> I was waiting for you to be like, it's so easy for us, and then you get tapped. <laughs> that would be funny. I that would be cried. a great twist. Unfortunately, well, I would have also died. Um, ah, that was the worst <laughs> of all time. Uh, 
All right. <laughs> On to the capital. So this is the, the final chapter in E-Frame's uh, storyline. Um, I'm going to have to actually think for a second here uh, because people are kind of out of order. Uh, no birds. No problem. Uh, While you're thinking, cool. let me just inform chat. <sighs> Let me let me chat, let chat know that Games Done Quick is looking for a new mainline event volunteer coordinator. Feel free to review the duties and apply at gamesdonequick.com slash jobs if you're interested. If you missed out on any of our shows or events, be sure to check out the VODs on youtube.com slash gamesdonequick. Still need some more time, homie? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, all right, so... Uh, this is the final story bomb that I'm getting. Well, not the final. There's one more story bomb. Th but this is a really cool story bomb. So let's talk about like what we're actually going to find out. So after this chapter, you basically find out that <laughs> Prince Leon has been doing a bunch of research because uh, Emperor Vergard is dead. Bye-bye. He's been dead for a year, by the way. Uh, and you may be wondering, well, he's dead, but he's sitting on the throne. Yes, we are fighting a reanimated corpse right now. We don't know that, but we're going to find that out, which is insane, by the way. <laughs> we're just casually fighting a reanimated corpse. Don't worry about it. But essentially, uh, Prince Leon is... Um, how to put this nicely? Prince Leon is kind of a coward, kind of a little baby. And so basically when his father died, uh, he thought he was so unfit to rule that <laughs> instead of just like getting better... <laughs> Um, he is like, how can I resurrect my father? <laughs> Insane thought process. Don't know how he does it. <laughs> but that's his thought process. So he researches how to re uh, basically revive his father from the dead. And basically what ends up happening is that he splits the Sacred Stone of Grotto in two. So the Sacred Stone of Grotto is the stone that was used to basically trap the Demon's King's soul. He split it in half. One half is the Sacred Stone. One half is the Dark Stone. He killed the Sacred Stone. And then he revived his father with the Dark Stone. Um, uh, and that's basically what we find out. But I think the cooler part of this is that we, we run into a character called Null. Now, I think the coolest thing for me in Fire Emblem games, just in general, are the support conversations. Um, and I think it's really exemplified in this game because you literally will not find out about a major component of the story, or just like, not a major component, but just like a very cool extra flavor if you don't read a support conversation between Natasha and Noel. Um, this is the longest uh, in the game, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Cool, eleven redraws. It's fine. You know, just don't worry about it. But you literally wouldn't find out about this if you don't read that support conversation. So what are you finding out? So Leon was doing research just to figure out to basically revive his father, right? But what they were also doing is uh, researching a spell that allows them to see into the future which you just wouldn't find out about at all that they were doing this if you didn't read the support conversation, which I find incredibly just insane <laughs> that they just like hid this lore like in a random support conversation that you just have to find like casually if you're playing it for the first time. And basically they use this knowledge to basically predict that a storm is going to uh, hit the southern tip of Grado, and they literally used, they literally looked at the future, used that information and saved these people, uh, like the Grado people, and then uh, what they also did was uh, trade and open up doors for Seth so that he can kill the Emperor. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's also, let's, let's, let's watch Seth kill this guy, shall we? It'll be a good time. Um, this guy doesn't talk, by the way, because he's a reanimated corpse, so we're just going to skip over his dialogue, which we would anyway. Uh, good, that missed. That would have killed us if it hit. Uh, and good thing we have a 4% chance to crit, and so we're going to do that. But yeah, so they can literally see into the future, right? And so they basically find out that they're, in five years, there's going to be a super massive earthquake that's going to hit the southern tip of Grotto and basically annihilate half the population. Not to be confused with the super massive earthquake in California. These are two different things. There, there was no inspiration taken. Uh, two very different things. Um, and, you, like, you literally wouldn't find out that they know how to look into the future if you just didn't read the support conversation, which I just find fascinating, uh, to say the very least. Um, so here, we're going to get a couple items here. These items are known as sacred twins. You basically need an S rank uh, weapon profic proficiency level in order to wield and use them. Um, we'll talk about that in, uh, a, 
in a, a bit, in a bit. But for now, we're going to go into uh, chapter 15. And we're going to do some trading. Trading. Oh, cool. This lines up. That's nice for me. Ugh. All right. And then we're going to move Seth here. Duffel there. We're so back. We're going to watch this cutscene as well because if you don't watch that cutscene, your RNG gets smartered as well. We don't want that to happen. And so, so this is, uh, again, one of the longest maps in the game. This is a kill all map. Fun fact kill all maps take a lot of time. And so, basically, we're going to split this into two major sections because there are two generals uh, to defeat on this map. There is Kalek and Valter. Valter is this guy on the bottom right side of the map. Kalek is the general in the top left. Excuse me. In the top left side of the map. Uh, basically, these are uh, Imperial generals of Grado. They're super OP. Um, they both uh, are hunting... Uh, well, Valter is hunting E-Frame and Erica because he wants to hunt both of them because he just loves killing people. That's his whole personality, by the way, is he loves killing people. He just, he loves it. <laughs> uh, crazy, that's, that's a personality trait in this game. Don't worry about it. They can see into the future. Anyway, um, and so Kalek uh, is the guy who basically uh, was, uh, was sent to Jehenna to destroy its sacred stone, which, hey guys, we'll story bomb in a second. But for now, let's talk about what we're doing on this map. So as you can see, Seth is in the bottom right side of the map, and we have this whole giant cacophony of enemies here, this, this massive group. We have to kill them all because this is a kill-all map. And so basically, as you can see, kind of on the northern edge of the, 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 the map, there's a bunch of sand. And basically sand, similar to forests, similar to mountains, inhibits the movement of grounded units. And so we are sending Seth along the bottom right edge in order to kill all these enemies because he is not impeded movement-wise. Um, and we're going to send uh, Cormag to the top left where Kalek is because he is not impeded by sand. He doesn't care about sand. He just flies over it, right? And so we're using basically uh, max movement in order to get to the, the two bosses as fast as possible while also just kind of one-tapping every unit along the way. Um, and so here, we're going to attack this guy with Ennis. This is the only kill Ennis gets in the game. Everyone, woohoo! That's Ennis's kill! Yay! Sally actually is a bit more useful. He gets a, a couple more kills. This is Sally. Uh, and then we're gonna send Cormag up here. Again, not impeded by the sand, so he can just kind of get all the way to the top here and kill this guy, and then he's going to kill everyone else up there. Seth is going to uh, reset the game, uh, and then Seth is going to <laughs> do this. <laughs> and again, two Troubadours, two healers, that means we have to burn a player turn in order to... Uh, in order to kill them, and so that's what we have to do. Um, but yeah, so that's just kind of the general vibe. And so let's talk about uh, the other half of the 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 uh, the story, which is Erica. And I'm going to sum this up really quickly. Uh, Erica tried to go on a boat to Rostin, but couldn't because T Pain would not let her on the boat. And so then she finds out that Prince Ennis is uh, getting betrayed by Carcino, and they want to kill him. So then she has to go rescue him. And then basically, uh, Erica meets Sally. Uh, she converts to a religion. She learns Valega. And then, uh, and then they go to Jehenna finally. And then uh, Kalek kill like destroys the Sacred Stone. He, the queen is dead. And then Valter also team kills. And that's what you find out on Erica's side of the story. Um, specifically, Valter team kills uh, Glenn, who is another Grado general, who is the brother of uh, Cormag. Fun fact. But we're not going to kill Valter with Cormag. We're going to kill him with Seth. Um, but, it, you know, I get it. I get it. We want Cormag to kill Valter, but it's fine. Uh, because, you know, Valter, you know, Valter uh, banged up Seth at the beginning of the run. So it, it's only it's only natural that at least Seth gets the kill, you know. Um, and yeah. And then another thing that we're going to see here is that um, on this map, there are uh, hidden items. Um, water time there are hidden items and basically uh i mentioned that you know we can burn numbers to influence hits and crits as you can guess uh it's luck based whether you pick up an item or not in the sand and so we're manipulating this in a way so that we will always pick up an item in the sand which is we're going to pick up the boots which gives us plus two movement which will just make cormag move further and clear maps faster also fun fact about the japanese version of the game um, 
this guy moves. Why does he move? That's insane. I like, the fact that a boss moves is just absolutely insane to me. Um, and so they took that out in the U.S. version. <laughs> Collect does not move. He just sits there. But for the speedrun, it's actually uh, pretty nice for us because we don't have to burn the turn to go get him. And so here's the boots that we're going to pick up because we can uh, manip our luck here. And then Sally's going to kill uh, these two enemies up top. And then we're going to kill uh, Kalek. So Kalek has an item called the Hoplin Guard, which basically negates critical strikes. And so we have to three hit him. So you, like, there's no other way to kill this guy other than a three hit. Uh, and so we do that. And then uh, Volter has a Philly Shield, which negates bow users, but we don't use the bow user. So his item doesn't matter for us. But this item does matter, which is why you saw me not crit him at all. And unfortunately for Volter, he is a corpse that does not know that he's dead. And that's just that's just the end of Volter. There's nothing you can do about that. And that is also the last player turn for this map. Everything is going uh, according to plan. Uh, and yeah, so we're just going to kind of watch these uh, last guys kind of just get hit up. Um, and then we're going to move on to chapter 16. Um, and I'm going to drink water. All right, so basically, um, as you notice, there are two different routes. There's the Erica and the E-frame route. This is basically the chapter where the twins collide. So we were riding to save Erica after we stormed the capital. And we're going to get more S-rank items. Again, we'll talk more about this in a second. Um, literally after the next chapter is when we're going to talk about it. Uh, but now we're going to save, and then we're going to go back to Rennes. So Rennes uh, originally got captured. Uh, by Greta Forces, we are going to take it back as Ephraim and Erica. Um, but this, uh, fun fact, this chapter, uh, I'm going to do prime real quick, actually. Goodbye, Dussel. Uh, no, we want Tana still. Yes. All right. Okay, this, 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 is, this is still familiar. Good. This, this is all lining up very nicely. All right, we're going to go get the boots. So again, the boots increases our movement, basically allows us to move uh, to the end of the chapters faster. Um, fun fact, this is a, a seize map, so we have to seize the throne. Um, but as I was mentioning, uh, there are differences uh, between the two routes. Obviously, there are literal different <laughs> um, maps that you fight on Erica's side of things. But a, a, the, the final difference we're going to see here is that... The final difference we're going to see here is that on Chapter 16 specifically, you actually have two different starting zones. So if you uh, choose uh, E-Frame's route, you start on the far bottom left-hand side of this map. Um, you start on the far bottom left side of the map, and then uh, on Erica's side, you actually start on the bottom right side of the map, which is actually beneficial to Erica's uh, route. Uh, this is because um, there are forests on the left side of the map, which inhibits our movement. So you actually saw me do a bunch of rescue chains in order to basically fly our units over the the bushes with Tana and uh, Cormag. Um, because, uh, but on Erica's side of the map, you actually don't have to deal with that at all. Um, and so the, the main difference is, uh, is that this is actually very beneficial to Erica because she spawns closer to the throne room because we have to seize. And we spawn on the bottom left, so we have to go all the way up and then down and then around and then all the way up again to get to Orson, right? Uh, by the way, Orson betrayed us in Chapter 5X. I didn't mention that, but he betrayed us. <laughs> it, so we're going to kill him. Don't worry. He's not going to get away with it. But the long and short of it is that Erica, uh, Erica, you actually can four-turn this map because you can actually uh, manipulate uh, the people here. Um, so this is the main reason why this... Uh, uh, don't do that. Okay. I almost did something really bad. Okay. <laughs> I almost dropped E-Frame. Um, so basically, uh, on E-Frame's uh, side, just in general, in the game, E-Frame's route is seen as the harder route uh, in comparison to Erica's route. And so... Basically, what they do is in Chapter 16, they spawn more enemies, more reinforcements. And so you can kind of see what is happening here. We have to watch these guys just walk and walk and move and move. And we're, like, eating, like, so much time just watching these guys move. But on Erica's side of things, you can actually manip it so that you can uh, basically move your units in a way so that 
reinforcements don't spawn until like your very last turn. And so you don't have to watch all these guys walk forever. But we're going to watch all these guys walk forever. Um, and this actually eats up a ton of uh, time as well as since Erica's closer to the throne room, she can just end this, uh, this level in four turns. But in uh, E-frame side, we're ending it in six turns. Um, now, with all that being said about how Erica is faster, uh, she's actually not. Uh, her route is two minutes slower. And this is because specifically of this guy on the screen right here, Cormag. Uh, on E-frame side of the route, you get Cormag in chapter 10. And basically, because you get him in chapter 10, you can feed him a bunch of XP in chapter 11, and then he becomes a usable unit in chapter 12. Um, but we don't get Cormag until chapter 13 in Erica's side, which is just far too late to feed him a bunch of XP for him to be useful. So you have to feed uh, XP to Vanessa the whole game, the whole early game. And so it just eats up a ton, a ton of time um, because you have to feed Vanessa over the course of like 10, 11 chapters. But here we feed Vanessa over the, we feed Cormag over the course of one chapter, right? So we just save a bunch of time and then we're going to also end uh, this. Uh, this is basically asking us if we want to uh, class change Ephraim and Erica. We do not, so we're pressing no. Um, and we're going to drop specific items on Erica because we want her her sword. Oop, I won't want to skip that. So this is Siege Lane. This is, uh, and then this is, uh, sorry, that's Siege Mun. This is Siege Lane. Uh, we're going to drop the steel sword there. And basically, I mentioned there are S rank weapons. So in this game, there are uh, weapon ranks. There is E to uh, S. So there's E, D, C, B, A, S. I think that's the alphabet backwards. Don't quote me. <laughs> Um, actually, I'm going to check this real quick. Uh, that looks fine. Um, okay. Again, I just wanted to make sure my units were in the proper position. They are. We're so back. Um, but so there are S rank weapons in the game. And basically these S rank weapons are uh, similar to the rapier that I mentioned before. They are super effective against monster units uh, in the game, which the Demon King is a monster unit, a monster type unit. And so we're going to use one of these S rank weapons in order to kill the Demon King with Cormag. But the thing about Siegelin and Siegelman is that they uh, are similar. They are also, uh, how do I explain this? Um, they are... So the S-rank weapons are super effective against monsters. These weapons are also super effective against monsters, but they don't require S-rank to use them because they are locked to E-frame and Erica. So E-frame and Erica actually don't need S-rank in order to use these weapons, um, but everyone else needs needs them. But no one else can use those weapons, right? So they're 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 locked to their their character. Um, and yeah, yes, there we go. I I explained that. We got there eventually. <laughs> we got there eventually. But it's very important that they're able to, to use that, to use these weapons, because this map is a monster map, um, and it's also a kill-all map. But the difference with this map is that this is a very annoying kill-all map, because the enemies don't move. Um, <laughs> which is kind of funny, uh, but that's because there's a bunch of eggs. Uh, as you can see uh, in the corner, there's a bunch of eggs here. I'm going to move these guys. And so this is another very input-dense uh, level here. So we're going to try to not beef this. Uh, we're going to get the S-rank lanch from uh, E-frame here. That's the... Uh, I don't... I'm not even going to pretend to know how to say the name. So I'm going to say it's the Verdenerf. So if I say Verdenerf, that's the name of the lanth. I don't care if that's not how you pronounce it. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> so we get Verdenerf, and Verdenerf is super effective against monsters. And that's all you really need to know about it. Um, and so the reason that these S-rank weapons are useful is because uh, since this is a kill-all map, we have to spread out our units very heavily because of all these eggs, because the eggs don't move. And so we have to get our units to these eggs and we have to spend a player turn to kill each egg. Um, so like we can't, and these eggs do eventually hatch. They gain HP and hatch, but waiting for them to hatch is very, very slow. And we don't want to do that. And we also, up, oh, look, look. We also don't want to wait for the enemy's turn is what I was going to say. It was going to be cooler, but unfortunately I missed it. It's fine. Anyway, we're going to do it now. No, we're not. Oh my God, I'm doing it too early. Sure, we're going to get it this time. Anyway, so you may be asking, well, I didn't set up a torch staff. How am I activating ECG? Well, this is because the... Um, the... What's it called? The, the eggs act as actor tiles. Uh, so, uh, which is actually... I think how ECG was originally found was on this map because these eggs, there's just so many actor tiles 
that because every single egg is an actor tile and so if an enemy like lands on one of them and ends the turn naturally you're gonna see ecg happen uh, a bit more right um but more about what we're doing on this map so we have to spread out our units pretty heavily and so you're gonna see a lot of rescuing and, and a lot of just uh using our units with high mobility to get to the basically the corners of the map and also we're going to notice with these eggs is each time we kill one of them we gain 50 xp which is good if you want to gain xp however it's bad for us because every time we gain a level we play this whole thing right this whole thing this whole level up animation it takes a long time and we simply don't want that to happen um also what we did there uh, when we uh, used enemy control glitches that we unequipped stone from the enemy uh, gorgon because uh, stone has a range of three there are certain things with a range of three and so we basically discarded it so she has to come to uh, range with sally and just fight him and stuff right and that was the general that's the general vibe of why we did that but so we have to spread out our units on this map and essentially how we're going to do that Um, is that we're going to use Ephraim and Erica both because, again, these their their uh, their weapons, which are locked to them, uh, have a very very high might. So again, might is the strength modifier of the weapon itself, not the lords, right? So Erica has like I don't know how much strength. I mean, we can we can check. That was almost bad. We're so back though. I caught it. Um, We'll explain this in a second, actually. I'm going to make sure I don't mess up this turn. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to use Siege Lane, which is Erica's sword, in order to kill a Gargoyle. Um, because Tana can't kill him, and basically the Siege Lane gives us plus five strength, but also its might is 16. It's just it's just a ridiculously high number, and that's the, the general vibe of these... Uh, what, what do you call it? These, uh, these S-rank weapons, or these, like... Because these are the weapons you're supposed to use to fight the Demon King, so naturally they're very uh, OP. Um, and again, we don't require S rank, uh, which is very nice for us, so that they can just use that. And so, for example, level 10 Erica with 7 strength is going to do 30 plus damage to the... Um, uh, not Gargoyle, that's not... Wait, gar yeah, Gargoyle, that's the word I'm looking for. She's going to just one-tap the Gargoyle, and she's like level like 10, <laughs> right? <laughs> um... And that's just kind of the the strength, the raw strength of these weapons, which is why we wanted to uh, equip it on Erica, and we did that kind of like menu trick when we first got those weapons. Um, but this is the last turn of this map, and surely we clutch it out. Also, another thing that I didn't mention is that we're using so many units because we want to avoid as many level ups as possible. For example, Ephraim uh, hits that egg and doesn't level up. Which is good for us because we want to avoid level ups and both Sally and Tana are going to avoid level ups, I believe, coming up. Uh, um, and so it, 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 when, when they routed this, they basically had to think about a lot of things. I think this was the hardest one for them to route. Um, again, I did not route this. Uh, I copied what the other Fire Emblem runners did who are smart and routed this. Um, I just copied what they did, but... Uh, this is basically one of the hardest ones because there's so, there's so many player turns that you have to do. Fun crit there. Um, and basically you have to, like trying to avoid level ups, trying to use as little units as possible. There's so many variables to think about when you're routing that level, which makes it one of the most interesting levels because I believe it's the one that has changed the most over the years. Um, but, uh, can we do that? Okay, we can. Cool, Garcia's in the right spot. Again, uh, Nimi was not in the right spot. Uh, so I was just making sure that we're we're so back here. Oh, but they're not in the right spot. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, so here, uh, this is chapter 19. This is mm, probably my favorite map in the game. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. I'll be brave. This is my favorite map in the game. Um, this is a very long defense chapter or a very hard kill the boss chapter. Um, and so essentially, we need this guy here. Um, and now we can go. All right, and as you kind of get, I kind of gave it away with <laughs> taking out Mulder. Uh, but again, I mentioned this is a very long defense chapter or a very hard uh, kill the boss chapter, and we're going to make it a very short kill the boss chapter. And by that, we're going to kill the boss in two turns. Smile. 
Um, so we're going to do is we're going to uh, oh, we're going to end our turn and then activate ECG. I just I just wanted to, to control him right away. I didn't <laughs> I didn't want to wait. <laughs> uh, I want that, and then you uh, come over here and basically we're going to clear the path for Reeve, who is the boss of this map. And then we're also going to rescue Chain Reeve so that we can bring him in range, which is hilarious that we're using rescue chaining on an enemy turn. Uh, at least to me, it's really funny. And we, we also unequip this guy just so he doesn't counterattack. Again, it just saves some time to not watch people counterattack. Um, and then we bring Reeve right in range so that Garcia can uh, light up the area and we can crit him, one-shot him, and see you later. Uh, bye! Um, and that is uh, a two-turn, uh, very, very hard map that we uh, just completely trivialize. <laughs> um, th 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 that's that's definitely one of my that's that's one of my favorite maps in the speedrun too, just because it's so funny that we just <laughs> we just two-turn, two-turn it. All right, and then now we're gonna get a bunch of more sacred tones. These are all sacred weapons. Uh, we're gonna use none of them. We already have the ones that we need. But now we are into the last two chapters of the game. Uh, we are now done fighting human beings. We are now exclusively fighting monsters, which now we're going to use Verda Nerf. Again, that's exactly how you pronounce that. We're going to use Verda Nerf in order to kill uh, uh, basically almost every single enemy uh, from now on. Actually, that's a lie. We're going we're gonna to use um, things as well. Uh, this is correct. I think that's correct. We're going to find out if it's not correct or not. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to equip this, and then we're going to trade uh, with Eframe. We're actually going to give him uh, this uh, javelin. This is because we're going to do a lot of AI manipulation. And so the first AI manipulation we're going to do is we're going to remove uh, grounded units from the game. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so if you notice, I'm standing on a thicket, and I'm standing on a mountain. And so since... Grounded units cannot get to these types of spaces in the game. All these grounded units you see on the map, all these like bone walkers with the shields and the swords, none of these guys are going to move on this turn because no one is touching the ground. And so we're saving a bunch of time here by just, um, what do you call it? By, uh, by not having any of our units on the ground, which is why we have Sirene rescue Teethies. And then we have this guy just kind of floating in the air. So none of these guys move. Also, fun fact, uh, Gorgons can fly on the Japanese version of the game. Um, that is also insane to me. I, <laughs> that, that was also a very shocking thing. Like, not only uh, can Kalek move in Chapter 15, but Gorgons can just fly. Both of those things were nerfed and changed. But as you can tell, we're on the ground now, so all these granite movements are now using. So we only get to kind of use that AI trick for one turn. Uh, but, it, you know, one turn is one turn, and that is less time on the, on the board here, right? And so, uh, yeah. And so we also uh, intentionally had uh, Cormag get hit a little bit here on this map. This is because when an, when a unit is lower health, uh, certain enemies will prioritize the lower health target instead of Eframe. Because again, we haven't... Um, I don't think that was correct. Nope, that's not correct. Okay. Interesting. We're so back. I must have messed up something. I didn't catch it. Okay. We're just going to do the same thing again and surely not mess up anything this time. Um, but yeah, that's a thing where if, if you do mess up, uh, that is kind of just what happens. Uh, you have the wrong set of uh, RNG and then you're just kind of screwed from there, right? So let's uh, do this again. This all looks correct to me. Maybe... Okay, we're gonna do this again. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's definitely the move I'm supposed to do. Um, I'm beginning to think maybe Cyrene is not in the proper square, which I guess I can just look at. <laughs> I'm, I'm cheating! <laughs> I'm cheating! He's cheating! Watch out! <laughs> because I did accidentally move uh, Nimi to the wrong space earlier on. So I'm just going to check this real quick um, and just make sure that this is not the case. And if so, we're going to have to do this again, uh, which is fine. Uh, 
Uh, no, Cyrene is in the right spot. Okay, this should work. In theory. Ryan, in theory, this should work. Yes. Okay. We should be fine here. Maybe we're not. If we're not fine, I... If we're not fine, I did the same mistake two times in a row, which is criminal for me. Um, but all of our units in the, are in the right spot here, so we should be... We're not fine. Okay. Some troubleshooting uh, going going on here and my tiny little brain. I know I didn't mess up anything in the last chapter. Uh, and I shouldn't be messing up anything here, but we're going to see. Well, we'll give it one more try. Okay. So this guy equips this. I trade with him. We move here. You go up here. You dance on him. And then Siren rescues him. Siren is in the correct spot. You are right next to him. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is 100% the move. If this does not work, then I have no idea why this is not working. <laughs> and that means the run's probably going to end because I don't know how to recover it from here. Um, which is very unfortunate, uh, but this should work. Every, everything in my head is saying that it should work, and I don't know why it's not working. Um, you know what that sounds like? Sounds like it's time for chat to come in and help out, make sure things go <laughs> smoothly. Because I think he should be at like 23 HP and not 25, which means I must have messed up something, but I got the crit on Sally, I got the crit on Reeve, This is the move that I do. I put E-frame there. I don't know. Maybe maybe the the Nimi thing just kind of owned me here. It hasn't owned me at all, like, leading up to this. But maybe it's just owning me now? Question mark? I don't know. This is odd. This has never happened before. So I have no idea why this is not working. Because normally I can, like, think back and be like, okay, I made a mistake here or there. But I definitely did not mess up anything on Chapter 19 because I had Mulder move from the same space that he move, moves from normally. Okay, I guess we're just owned here, I guess, guys. I don't know. Uh, so normally he's supposed to be at lower health. Uh, I don't know. That's that's all I got. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, no. that, that, that's, that's all I have. I don't have a, a save near the end of the game because normally it's fine near the end of the game. But... I guess I can just talk to you about what was about to happen. I was basically going to crit the three final bosses. Uh, the two final bosses, Leon and the Demon King, we basically would do like way less damage than we were supposed to, but the Weaver Knight class has a skill called Pierce, which basically negates all enemy defense, which is super, super cool, and I'm kind of mad that I can't show it off. Uh, but we can RNG manipulate uh, skill activations as well. So we would... Are, like we would intentionally activate Pierce in order to one-shot the final boss when we would do, like, 30 damage to it instead. But I, I guess that's all I have. I genuinely have no idea what I did wrong. I, I didn't catch it in time, I guess. So that I... Ooh. That's just it. Um, but luckily, it, it was... It, there were only two more maps after that, and so they were both... They are both two turns. So they're... It's not... It was at the very end. Whatever. That's fine. I... That, that that's that's all I got. That's very unfortunate. Um, I, I I guess I guess that Nimi thing just just screwed me over there. <laughs> Yo, hey, I I just gotta say, yeah, maybe you know something happened, messed up the strat for the rest of the run. But I I don't I, I can't speak for everyone, but I know I am just beyond impressed, impressed beyond words at how skilled you are for like putting all that together, keeping it going and like being able to just juggle so many hats and plates at once. That's that's man. I I sat here the entire time like I was I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to try and hop in. I'm gonna, I'm going <laughs> to throw in some comments as he plays and da da da. No, nah, you were playing, you were talking, you were explaining, you were kicking butt and taking names. I was like just sitting here like let him cook. No. Nah, let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> so well, uh, thank you, know? you know, I did. I did what I was mainly concerned about was the commentary, but unfortunately, the the, the gameplay just. 
Hey, man, I didn't think it, that man. was going to affect it because normally it doesn't. Whatever, whatever. I don't know. I'll have to watch that back and see what, what, what happened there. Maybe I did a, a slight mistake that everything else lined up, but that just didn't. Who knows? Yeah. You, I don't know you enough. Were, you were fantastic in the entire run, and I was I was just stuck to the screen watching, just getting into it. Like, what's next? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so, yeah. you know, it didn't, the strats didn't work out at the end, but the entire run was fantastic. Chat is in love with you, so... <laughs> You All did right. a fantastic job and, you know, really appreciate it and love having you out here. Well, thank you. Um, I guess I'll just do, like, very quick shout-outs. I just want to shout yeah. out uh, uh, Curry Master and basically all the other fire. It's not just Curry Master who routed this, but I know that this is my own. I don't know a lot about the history of this run, but I just know that everything that you saw me do here, I copied from the actual Fire Emblem runners who actually spent, like, so much time routing this crunching numbers you know, they did all the legwork so that I could show off this run to you today. And so I just wanted to give a big shout out to them. Um, and then I stream on Twitch sometimes, twitch.tv slash Astani. And that's kind of all the shout outs that I have. Um, and yeah, just thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm very, very unfortunate I couldn't uh, complete the run, but you saw most of the really, really cool stuff. And so that's really what I want to show. I just want to show how cool this game can be because I think Fire Emblem is just really, really sick. And I think this speed game itself is also just really cool with the enemy con control glitch, manipulating crits, just every, it's just a wild run. It's really cool. And then also, tomorrow night, I'm going to be running again. I'm going to be doing oh. a Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights uh, blackout bingo race with Cole tomorrow night at 11.40 p.m. Where I'm going to be the last run of the day tomorrow. So you should come watch that, and you should also stick around for all the run other runs coming up because there's, <laughs> there's a lot of gas coming up mm -hmm. for sure. Well, thank you again, Nastani. It's always a pleasure seeing you run. Uh, definitely a pleasure being here, just like witnessing it, just like sitting next to you as you do it, just like, this is so cool. <laughs> so thank you again. Appreciate it. Love having you here. Everyone, if you are not following Nastani, please treat yourself, all right? Because Nastani is phenomenal. Oh, man. So, yes, we're going to... Uh, oh, my camera seems to have... My camera seems to have gone on break. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure I know why, because a lovely, <clears throat> quirky little feline decided he wanted to go behind my computer. So, <laughs> I apologize for that. Give me, give me one second. Let me see if I can fix that. We got cat problems. It's always the cats, dude. Just at the the worst moments like you know what would mess them up just enough let's just unplug this really quickly here <laughs> mm -mm -mm. doggone peaches <laughs> <laughs> 